Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. I'm now answering question number four from the October 2023 Pure Mathematics P2 exam. And this is from the um, Edexcel Pearson's board. And it tells us here about this uh, equation or this expression f of x equals 4x cubed plus ax squared minus 29x plus b. And that tells us that a and b are constants. And we know that 2x plus 1 is a factor of f of x. And we got to show that this equation is true based upon the fact that 2x plus 1 is a factor of this expression. So if 2x plus 1 is a factor of the expression, it means that when you try to factorize this a cubic, um, normally it would have three factors, and one of them is going to be 2x plus 1. Now, um, how can we use the fact that this is a factor of this expression in order to help us get this equation? Well, we know that if this is a factor of the expression, when you equate this to 0, okay then 2x plus 1 is going to equal 0 in which case x is going to equal negative a half so if i replace x as negative a half inside this function what should come out is 0 because this is one of the values of x that makes the whole thing become 0 so whenever you're given something like this where they told you a certain uh, you know a certain factor is a factor of an expression like this like a cubic or a quartic or whatever it is then what you can do is you can say, okay, whatever value makes this bracket zero, if it's a factor, then this would be true. That means x equals negative a half is going to be a value of x which causes this whole expression to become zero because you know that's going to be one of the roots of this expression. So we know for sure that f minus a half has to equal zero. And from that, we should be able to show that this expression uh, is true. So if we replace x as negative a half in this expression we'll have four times negative a half cubed plus a times negative a half squared minus 29 times negative a half and um, plus b is going to have to give us zero okay and from this we can continue and we can um, just simplify so when you cube a negative number it stays negative um, we have a half cubed is one eighth. So it's going to end up being negative four over eight. And here you're going to have negative number squared is going to become positive. So a quarter squared is, uh, sorry, a half squared is a quarter. So you're left with positive a quarter a. And then you're going to have minus 29 times minus a half, which is going to be positive. You can say 29 over two. Here you're going to have plus b equals zero. All right. So um, if we try to simplify this, um, this is going to become minus a half plus a quarter a plus 29 over 2 plus b equals 0. These two can be combined. 29 over 2 minus 1 is 28 over 2, which is going to be 14. So we're left with um, a quarter a plus b plus 14 equals zero because 28 minus 29 minus 1 is 28 28 divided by 2 is, is 14. now we want to get rid of the fraction so let's multiply everything by four so a four times a quarter is one so it's one a plus four b plus and 14 times four that's 40 plus 16 which is 56 equals zero so it's almost um as we want it we have to just subtract 56 from both sides a plus four b is equal to negative 56 and that's exactly what we had to show. Okay, so there's the answer to part A. All right, they, they also told us, given also that when f of x is divided by x minus 2, the remainder is 25. So we have something called the remainder theorem. The remainder theorem is if, um, you know, if you, if you have x minus a, and you put a inside the function, and you're left with b, that means b is the remainder when you divide it by a. Okay, so if you divide f of x by x minus a, okay, if you divide f of x, so if you have f of x divided by x minus a, okay, then f a gives you the remainder. That's what it basically is telling us. Okay, so if I replace inside this function whatever makes this bracket zero, which is two, what should come out is the remainder, which is minus 25. In this case, when it's a factor, the remainder is zero. That's why when I put minus a half inside the original function and um, 2x plus 1 is a factor, 
whatever makes this bracket zero is going to give a remainder of zero, which means it's a factor. When you divide something by something and there's no remainder, it means it's a factor. So in this case, it's not a factor, there's a remainder of minus 25. So when you replace x with whatever makes this bracket zero inside the function f of x, what comes out is the remainder, which should be minus 25. So if we just apply this here now, we're going to have 4 times 2 cubed plus a times 2 squared minus 29 times 2 plus b has to give us negative 25. That's 4 times 8, which is 32. That's 4 times a, which is 4a. That's minus 29 times 2. That's 40 plus 18 minus 58 plus b equals negative 25. So we're left with 4a plus b. 32 minus 58 is going to be negative 26 equals negative 25. So you have to add 26 to both sides. So 4a plus b minus 25 plus 26. Just to make it very clear when we have to show something. So 4a plus b is equal to 1. Okay, so we have uh, a plus 4b equals minus 56 from there, from this information. And from the information here, 4a plus b equals 1. Okay, so now we have to go on to part C, which I'm sure we're going to have to use these two. It says, um, hence using algebra and showing you're working, find the value of A and B, and then fully factorize F of X. So we worked out just now that 4A plus B, was it? 4A plus B equals 1, yes. So um, 4A plus B equals 1 is the other equation that we formed. So hence means using what we just did, which is find these equations here. So we have a plus 4b equals negative 56 and 4a plus b equals 1. Now there's a, a numerous, there are numerous ways we could go about um, dealing with this. We could do it by substitution. For example, I could say b is equal to 1 minus 4a. And I could re replace this b with 1 minus 4a. So I can substitute this into this equation. So I say a plus 4 times. Instead of b, I can write 1 minus 4a equals negative 56. So a plus 4 minus 16a equals negative 56. So you have a minus 16a, which is minus 15a, is equal to minus 60. So a is equal to minus 60 over negative 15, which is going to be 4. So we know a equals 4, in which case b is equal to 1 minus 4 times 4, so b is equal to 1 minus 16, b is equal to negative 15. So a is equal to 4, and b is equal to negative 15. Um, let's just make sure that works here. So you have 4 plus, uh, that's 4 minus 60 is minus 56, that's correct. And 4 times 4 is 16, minus 15 is 1, good. So these two satisfy both equations, and we have solved it. We could have also done it simultaneously. For example, I could have multiply this equation by 4, in which case I'll have a plus 4b equals minus 56, and 16a plus 4b equals 4. I could have subtracted the two equations, leaving me with a, and then found what a is and found what b is. Similar kind of thing. Uh, whichever way you want to do it, substitution, elimination, it's fine. Then it says fully factorize f of x. So now we know what a and b are. We can write down what this equation is um, properly, and we can try to factorize. So we know that this is, we can say f of x is 4x cubed um, plus 4x squared minus 29x and minus 15. And we also know that 2x plus 1 was a factor, right? Is that what they told us? Yes. So 2x plus 1 is one of the factors. So we can do this in a numerous, numerous number of ways. We could do this by long division. Okay, we can say 2x plus 1 into 4x cubed plus, if the, make sure that all the terms are there. There's x cubed, x squared, x numbers, everything's there we don't have to worry about. If there was something missing, for example, if we had 4x cubed and then the x term without an x squared term, we would put 0x squared just to give it its proper position when we're doing our long division. So now with long division, you take the 2x and the 4x cubed, the first term and the first term, and you say how many times do I multiply 2x to give me, or what do I multiply 2x by to give me 4x cubed? Well, that's 2x squared. When I multiply those together, I get 4x cubed. So now I multiply these two terms by 2x squared. So it should be the same for the first term, of course. And then 2x squared times 1 is plus 2x squared. Okay, and then we do a subtraction of these two. Okay, so 4x cubed minus 4x cubed is 0, which it should be. 
And 4x squared minus 2x squared, we have to write 2x squared. We bring down the next term, which is negative 29x. Then 2x, the first term, always into the first term. 2x into 2x squared, well, you've got to go x times. x times 2x is 2x squared. And x times 1 is plus x. Again, we have to subtract. When we subtract, we see this becomes 0. This is minus 29x and minus 1x, which is minus 30x. Bring down the next term, which is negative 15. And then 2x into 30, and negative 30x goes minus 15 times. So we have minus 15 times 2x is minus 30x. And minus 15 times 1 is minus 15. As you can see, when you subtract these, you're going to get 0 as we should because it's a factor. So now we have um, our f of x is now can be expressed as 2x plus 1 times 2x squared plus x minus 15. And now we can factorize the last part here. Okay. And because we've got to split the middle term, I'm going to split it in my own little way. Some of you might not be used to this. So you have 2x squared and minus 15. I'm basically splitting the middle term in a visual way, that's all. So I need two numbers that multiply to give me the same as these two, which is negative 30x squared. And when I add them together, I have to get 1. So I think that's going to be 5 and 6, right? 5 and 6. 5 and 6, you're going to have a neg positive uh, 1. So it's going to be plus 5 and negative 6. So I know I'm going to have... Um, plus 5x and minus 6x. Those two will multiply to give me minus 30x squared and add to give me plus 1. Oh, plus 6x and minus 1x, sorry. The other way around. I have to get negative 1x. Or positive 1x, sorry. So now when I take out the factor from these two terms, I get 2 and x. 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times um, plus 3 is 6x. x times minus 5 is minus 5x and we can see that hopefully this is correct so 2x minus 5 is one factor so we have 2x plus 1 for the, the first factor and this splits up into 2x minus 5 and um, x plus 3 okay so our original equation okay 4x cubed um, where was it gone it's over here this one 4x cubed plus uh, 4x squared minus 29x plus 15 um, plus minus 15 okay so this original expression here okay breaks down into these three factors okay so that that's the answer to question number 4c part 2 we could have done this in a, in a slightly different way as well okay we could have done this by what's called uh, recognition so for example like as i said 2x plus 1 times ax squared plus bx plus c and i said okay 2x times something gives me i mean i have to end up with 4x cubed so the only option for a must be 2 that must be a 2 here that's going to give me 4x cubed then i could have looked at the constant term i have to end up with minus 15 all right so i have 1 times that c must be minus 15 so i know i have to be minus 15 here and then for the b term, you could have said, okay, I could look at the x squared terms and see when I expand this, the x squared term will get when I do 2 times 2x times bx, which is 2b, uh, 2, 2bx squared, right? And then when I do 1 times 2x squared, that's going to be a, which we already found is, is 2. Okay, any other, any other terms that give me x squared terms, that's it. It's just going to be this times this and 1 times that. So I know that has to be um equal to the x squared term which is 4 so 2b plus 2 equals 4 so we know that 2b is equal to 4 minus 2 which is is going to be 2 so b is going to equal 1 okay um so as we can see b is equal to 1 so we have a equals 2 c equals minus 15 and b equals 1 and then once you've got that we can then factorize so you can get this by what's called recognition like i've just done now or you can get this by long division. Most people go for long division. This is also quite a nice technique where you compare the coefficients. You know, basically, I know that this has to end up as a 4x cubed, so that must be a 2 here. I know that it has to end up as a minus 15, so 1 times something gives you minus 15, has to be minus 15. And then you can look at the x squared terms, as we did. You know, the only x ter squared terms are going to get when you do 2x times um, uh, 2x times x the x term so 2x times bx which is going to be 2b uh, and and the the 1 times x squared term 1 times 2 which is 2 that must give you 4 because 
the, um, the x squared term is a 4 here, and you can get the answer. All right, so there's lots of ways of, of different ways of doing this, and the, these are two of the ways I've shown you. Okay, so that, that concludes this question number four. Okay, fully factorized, here's a final answer. Other questions from this particular um, um, paper can be found in the playlist, which has a link over here. There's a link over here to the topic of, or, or the playlist, in, which includes a topic of the factor and remainder theorems and algebraic long division from P2. All of that will be in the playlist over here. You can subscribe to the channel by clicking on this link. And the video here that is linked will show you how to use my channel to find the things you need effectively. Thank you for watching and see you soon.